First of all, I'd like to say that I really don't enjoy coming to these meetings. Um, I have a very busy family and this is not how I'd like to be spending my time. However, I feel that if this small but committed group of individuals stopped coming to the township planning and supervisory meetings, our township would essentially be given away without argument to gas and oil development. Therefore, I feel it is my moral responsibility to, at the very least, show up and be a witness to the proceedings. I've asked many questions over the past year and a half. Not a single one has ever been answered by a member of this Board of Supervisors, so there will be some repeats here. First, as a general question, please explain to me how it benefits the majority of township residents to, quote, weaken our zoning ordinance in almost every respect and at the urging of Hillcore. These changes clearly provide financial benefits to a small group of leaseholders and gas and oil. The changes also clearly allow more potential for harm to the 70% of landowners who have not signed leases. Two, with regard to land use, how exactly does the Board of Supervisors classify unconventional gas and oil drilling? Is it commercial? Is it residential? Is it agricultural? Is it industrial? How does the industry classify it? How is it being assessed? It's industrial. So why is it not being treated as an industrial activity? Why are we essentially spot zoning for gas and oil development now instead of following a legal procedure to expand our current industrial district? Three, how did the Planning Commission arrive at the setbacks? And why is this not being researched more extensively and explained to our community? During discussion at recent planning meetings, it was very clear that numbers were being pulled out of the air and then used as bargaining chips in order to complete sections of the ordinance and then move on. If our township is just copying and pasting numbers from state minimums or from other township ordinances, we as concerned residents deserve to know. Our township is unique and the occupational, residential, and recreational interests of residents here may be very different than those of the townships or township this template was borrowed from. Four, and this is something that no one ever addresses, what is the comprehensive plan for the Wilmington Township? And how does gas and oil development fit into the plan? Are we going to capitalize on our strengths, which are the aesthetic beauty, unique cultural heritage, and agricultural character of the township? Or are we going to stick our heads in the sand and allow others to hijack our development? If we are not vigilant, Hillcore Corporation, among others, will be the party essentially creating our, quote, developmental plan. On that note, we ask for blueprints when local businesses want to expand, even when it's a small remodel. I have yet to see a comprehensive plan of what Hillcore wants to do in our township. What are the, blue, the blueprints and plans from Hillcore regarding our potential developmental sites? Where are the compressor stations going? We, we don't know. We're guessing. Why are these not readily available for public study and review? Is it because the industry knows that once the information becomes specific, residents are more likely to seek information and speak out regarding development? I think most township residents trust and believe that our representatives have their best interests in mind. I know that I personally would never have believed what I see as the level of negligence exhibited in this process had I not started coming to these meetings regularly about a year ago. This is why I'm videotaping the meetings, because after the fact, when the compressor stations are up and running, when Heather Heights is no longer the quiet and peaceful haven that it is today, when our water and soil have been compromised by industrial activities near the places where people live, gather, and grow food, people will have questions. They will want to know how this was allowed to happen in our quiet Amish community. I want them to be able to see and hear the reasoning, research, and general level of concern shown by the people responsible. 
Years from now, when our children and grandchildren ask who did this, we will be able to point to the videos and the transcripts of these meetings and say, Darren Elder, David L. McConaughey, and Tracy Deal, among others. Thank you. Hi, um, these are questions uh, that Warren Hickman had and he is not able to be here this evening. What happens when a company applies for a well permit? Drillers can drill up to 24 wells on one pad. How are the setback guidelines apply when there is more than one well drilled? Do the drillers have to apply for each well or time they drill? Or is it once and drill as much as they want? And my question continues to be, why is it at all unreasonable for Hillcore to enclose compressor stations to protect residents from the noise and pollutants? Whether that is something the township can require of them or not, why is it not something that they would do as many other drilling companies do? Um, I had some information regarding that I'd like to give to you guys, but um, I just wanted to say that the question of fracking is not, uh, is it harmful to us, but it's the extent and how long it will take. Um, I'll show you some, some of these things and I'd just like to give them to you guys to look at. Um, it says, we depend on DEP. And did you know that DEP has 670 fewer less staff members now than eight years ago due to budget cuts as of February 25, 2016? <coughs> There's a shortage of people and workload. Now do you trust me? <coughs> and that's a fact that I've, got, I've gotten all these facts from places, and some of them I have cited to show you the proof of where you can get that. Um, taxes, you know that fracking is being taxed as an industrial process. Why are we or why are you going against this and allowing it in a residential area? So this means that I can do what I want to do on my property because you're allowing others to do what they want to do. Um, uh, property values. Um, my property used to be valued as high as 171,000. It's slowly over the past 10 years went down 125,000, then 118,000, 104,000. And just this past week, I had an um, auctioneer slash realtor come to my house and they said that I'm lucky to get 90,000. So basically, I may have to just walk away from it. <coughs> Do you know that well on the well pads, you may have multiple well heads, 5, 10, 15, 20 well heads? And um, what, what happens whenever you have this? Um, I think if my question was the same as theirs, I listed the stages of what happens in the time frame of how it happens um, during this process. And when the well drops in production, they can come back as many times as they want to and restart the process. Do they have to come back and reapply, or do they just keep coming back in under that same uh, application or whatever? Um, how many of you have actually Googled the health risks of fracking? And I have a place on here that you can, there's actually 632, and that's an approximate number, toxins in the air, and I've listed some. Um, how many of you board members of both the Supervisors and Planning Commission know the meaning of, what, of this and can clearly explain to us all the meanings of these um, chemicals and all of their uh, like problems that they can cause health wise. And then back here I've listed some facts and I and I've cited it where I've gotten it from. Just a couple facts about air pollution um, that you can look at. Um, soil and noise are really not being studied. But we have a lot of farmers in our community, Amish and English. And just two facts about that is um, the Associated Press reported that the amount of chemically tainted soil from drilling waste increased 5,100% in the past decade. That's 512,000 tons in just the last year of damaged soil. 
Um, Exxon Mobil pipeline ruptured and spilled 42,000 gallons of oil into the Yellowstone River in Billings, Montana. They disclosed that they were transporting tar sands oil from Alberta, Canada, which is a low-grade, more toxic, and more corrosive type of oil. The regulators, which would be like you guys, were never made aware of this, and the transport was not even authorized. Okay, I have some other stuff here, but I know my time's up. Um, I also included a letter from the, like, the fire department that everybody gets. And here's the thing. Like, one of the things was just, I don't know who's going to pay for all the stuff that, you know, um, I mean, do we even have a plan from the fire department and stuff? You know about the explosion that just was and the earthquakes and, and all that stuff. I don't even know if any of this matters. But you want to talk to you guys? No, you guys can just talk. Sorry, Holmes. Um, you know, before I start, at the December meeting, um, I, I offered to donate to the township a clock that would give a more accurate reading, um, because that's been a significant problem. You're allowing us four minutes, but not everybody. So last week we held an event at the Wilmington Area High School, which you were all personally invited to attend. Um, how disappointing that not one of you came. I'd like to remind you of a second meeting, which I also invited you to last month. And that's the event at Westminster College tomorrow night regarding an independent investigation into the DP, DDP and its handling of water contamination complaints. Um, I have a packet I'm going to give you. Uh, with an enclosed advertisement and a write-up that was in the Newcastle News. There's several things in here, but uh, I'm going to save a front row seat for you, too. So you get a better view. Uh, the next, uh, I've included two excellent editorials. Um, one is from Dr. David Gray, a highly respected member of this community who has made several thoroughly researched presentations to our township officials. Next, it's been a bad week for the oil and gas industry. First, there were five earthquakes last week, the epicenters of which are within a mile or two of several Hill Corp energy well pads. The DEP is currently investigating the possibility that the active fracking operation at one of Hill Corp site, sites might be related or linked to these earthquakes. And considering the five Poland earthquakes uh, in 2014, which ranged from 2.2 to 3.0, were found to be directly linked to Hill course fracking operation at seven nearby wells, I would not be surprised if the DEP also links their frac fracking operation to these recent earthquakes in the Hurley Township. The ODNR banned Hill Corps from any further fracking activity within a three mile radius of those uh, earthquakes. Uh, including the boundary that reaches over into PA, overlapping Mahoney Township, where they're drilling right now and having earthquakes. And we pleaded with the DEP to please research this and do something about it, but they did nothing. Second, there was a major pipeline, as has already been commented, a major pipeline com uh, explosion. Um, and on the agenda for last month's planning meeting was to be a discussion on pipelines, which never happened. So for the record, in light of the recent disaster and others uh, which have recently occurred, I implore you to address the, the uh, pipelines in the township in our oil and gas ordinance. I've included two articles on the Salem pipe, pipeline explosion. One is from uh, Rhode Island publication, which includes a graph from the U.S. Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration which shows a dramatic increase in the number of pipeline accidents since non-conventional gas drilling began. During the April 19th planning meeting, the commissioners read a letter from the township insurance attorney, John Maloney, which suggested that all of the whereases be removed with little discussion. The commissioners voted and agreed to remove all six whereases. While I agree that the first five should have been removed, the sixth, which is an abbreviated statement from the Municipal Planning Code, it should remain in place. And it states, whereas local government's zoning ordinances are to protect, promote, protect, and facilitate the, the public health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens, citizens of the municipality. By the way, one word, morals, was eliminated from that statement. 
I would like to finish my closing um, statement. For the record, I believe that the proposed ordinance is a clear and eminent threat to my health and the safety and health of my children. And although I am not speaking as a representative, I will speak on behalf of the Amish community because I believe their health and safety is at risk. And due to religious beliefs, um, they have largely been unwilling to convey their concerns at these public meetings. Um, as others have spoken, many questions have not been answered. And I'm respectfully submitting several questions that I believe are important to the consideration of the draft ordinance number one of 2016. If they cannot be answered tonight, I believe I have the right to receive written answers to my questions in a timely manner. Number one, what safety measures are in place to meet emergencies resulting from fracking? I've attached two newspaper articles regarding the earthquakes in Mahone Township and the explosion in Salem Township destroying a house and severely burning a man as he fled his house from the heat of a fire one half mile away. Number two, what benefits do the residents of New Warrington gain from the placement of fracking sites closer than other communities? What disadvantages are these being considered? And I have a sheet showing on some of these ordinances. Number three, why is a building to muffle compressor sound better than a soundproof building? Other community ordinances realize the importance of soundproof buildings and I have attached a sheet showing uh, information on that. And number four, what is the rationale of considering other zoning areas, such as an agricultural zone, to permit unconventional gas drilling, rather than permitting it only in an industrial zone area? Thank you for the consideration of these questions. Wilmington Township, Lawrence County. This letter that I just handed out was sent to you on October 5th of 2015, as well as the solicitor at the time. It outlines the current rule of law around Act 13 in light of the Robinson Township decision, as well as many other cases. This letter, as well as the follow-up letter of December 18th, 2015, was never responded to. You continue to push forward and ultimately adopt a very lenient and industry-friendly ordinance. As you're all aware, the procedure that you went through to approve that December 2015 ordinance was defective. I hate the fact that I'm the guy that had to sue the township he lives in. I just hate it. I've gained nothing. I have no potential financial gain from the process. It's an out-of-pocket expense that could have been used for a kid's college education or home and property. The solicitor made a comment that anybody can sue anybody for $200 in a complaint, and it's, believe me, much more than that, and I hate it that it's me. Um, my goal is to protect my family's health, safety, property value, and peace of mind. I want my property to be the way it was when I purchased it. I can tell you that if a well pad goes in as close to my house as possible, like stated by one of the township planning commissioners, then these things aren't protected. Is it not your job to protect the citizens of this township? The fact is that there have been 20 or more people at the Tailing and Commission meetings and supervisory board meetings for the last year and a half or two years, overwhelmingly speaking against unconventional oil and gas drilling in anywhere other than industrial areas. This doesn't even take into the consideration the turnout of the public hearings with 90% or more of the people uh, being opposed to this and, and 100 people or more being here. Our new solicitor said that the, town sh that the public opinion and open dialogue will be used while formulating a new oil and gas ordinance. I've yet to see that happen. At the last planning commission on, on April 19th, township residents were allowed five minutes to speak. The attorney for Hillcore Energy was allowed much more time. Additionally, residents, including myself, were not allowed to ask questions or engage in the conversation but the planning commissioners did allow Mr. Lucas to interject and even ask him questions 
about his what his client would want in an ordinance. How is this due process an open dialogue with the township residents? It's open dialogue with the industry. Unconventional oil and gas drilling is a highly industrial process and incompatible with agricultural land use. It does not improve livestock or crop operations. It does not good for soil, water, or air. The answer is it's not compatible with agricultural land use. How have you come to the determination that it is? It's not an industrial process. How is it an agricultural process? I don't understand. Um, I am resubmitting this letter and request that it be submitted into the public record. I also ask that the questions on the letter be answered before you take any more steps with the proposed ordinance. I want, I want to trust that, it's, that you're making sound decisions. I want to believe that you're acting for the good of town, the township and its residents and not for the financial gain of a few, including board members and planning commissioners. Right now, I don't think you have any idea what is coming our way if you continue with the ordinance that the planning commissioners sent one to send to the, the county. The planning commissioners re removed section 100.79i at Hillcore's request stating redundancy. This, however, eliminated drill cuttings from being in closed tanks, so now they can be spread over a landowner's property. I highly doubt the township's planning commissioners even knew what they were approving. Um, I didn't know what drill cuttings were. I went home and looked them up, and I ask you to look things up on your own. Don't take Mr. Lucas and Hillcore's word for things. Look things up on your own. Ask the township residents. Ask me. Do work on your own. Do research on your own. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Um, I, I want to just make a statement on a few things to just clarify the record. And you can get me on tape, too, if you'd like. Mr. Lucas was provided an opportunity to speak because he submitted written comments pursuant to the legislation that was prepared. Uh, additionally, one thing the public should, should know, in addition to Mr. Lucas, Mr. Papa was provided a copy of the proposed ordinance as well as a couple other attorneys in the area. However, the only uh, written response that was submitted to the Planning Commission was from Mr. Lucas. And if I recall what the Planning Commission did, they examined that and they addressed each point um, as indicated. And some of the points raised by Mr. Lucas were not accepted. So with that in mind, I just want to keep the record clear on that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anybody have a chance to look at the minutes of April meeting? Looking for a motion. Give me uh, one second. motion to accept April's meeting minutes. I object. There are three other attendees at the meeting who are not listed. Uh, Laurel Adams spoke, so did Warren Hickman, and so did Al Rutna. They all shared comments that night. And we have a recording of it.
Wow. So, if, you want, if, if you want to correct the minutes, well, that's, that's what we're here for. I'll make the motion to uh, accept April meeting minutes with the corrections of Noel Adams, Al Ratna, and Warren Hickman speaking under the public comment period. I'll second that. motion to pay bills on the payroll. Second. Yes. Yes.
motion to schedule a public meeting upon receipt of the ordinance number one of 2016 from the Wilmington Township Planning Commission. That advertisement shall be posted at the township and the New Castle News for two times consecutive weeks. When I'm picking a date, which is. I'll make a motion to schedule a public meeting for the ordinance number one of 2016. I'll second. Yes, Yes. Yes. I object again. You have not taken into consideration the letter that our attorney Mr. has Mr. Chairman, sent. move on. It's not public comment any longer. I'm allowed to make an objection, objection <coughs> and it has to be recorded into the public minute in the minutes. And you did. Thank you. I didn't finish. You're welcome. You made your objection. A motion to accept the bids for the road and the products. I'll second it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Which one is that, Tracy? This is uh, Russell Standard. I'm going to read them as I open them. It'll be easier for you guys. Yeah, go ahead. So Russell Standard is quoting the following. It's the Thousand China Super Paid HMA Binder Course 19 and then there's nothing for 40,000 gallons. Or the only thing they did, I'm sorry, 40,000 gallons of CRS True Easily Emulsion. At 1.143 makes the total $45,720. Say that number again, Tracy. Okay, $45,720. This will be the other next one, right? Mm -hmm. That will be the other next one, right? Say that. Um, 1.136 makes a total of 45,440 bucks. There's two on there. There's a thousand kind of super paid HMA binder course 19mm at 020.3 million design for 47.88 a ton. And then there's 500 tons of super paid wearing course 9.5mm 020.3 million. Um, the second one was put up is $48.24 a ton. And that's as low as the, the other first one is delivered.
Ähm make a motion to accept two coats bid at 1.136 for 40,000 40, gallon and number three two three okay. emulsions to be delivered to the council to be delivered in the spade spade at the website okay Except Dunbar asphalt bid for a thousand ton delivered to the job site at forty seven eighty eight. It's it's five hundred ton. Okay. No, no, the first one. The first one's a thousand. Okay. The second one's five hundred. Yeah, it's top. It's top. Accept the bids on Corn Street slab for the middle of the pavilion at Marty Park. <coughs> Junto <coughs> has a bid of 
Chalked up concrete <clears throat> they have a bid of three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars and Joe oh, yeah. Korea he also has a bid of three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars two of them that are the same I know you, you want to get this project completed as soon as possible, but the Corio bid is much more detailed than the Chalka bid, but they're the same price. So I don't know how you can differentiate as to who the lowest responsible bidders on the bid. Corio, like I said, it's, it's very detailed and they have a lot of uh, information in front of you as opposed to the, the chalk the bit. So. I would almost be inclined to recommend that you, you, you reject the bids and get the additional prices. I don't know how I'm, yeah. I don't know how I'm yeah. qualified to read that and say you're getting the bang yeah. for your buck as compared to, to that. To that. <clears throat> you know, you're getting the, 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 the specifications of the pad, you're getting the, the thickness of the concrete compaction. So you recommend this throw them out from your bid? I, I don't see the, I mean, I see the number, but I don't see the, the level of, you know, what's eight, eight by eight blocks, question mark, 12 yards with fiber. You know, even the one from Jemco, even though it's the highest, you, you still have, he, he's telling you what the dimensions are, the, the thickness, you know, or you can, you can uh, disregard this one as non-responsive, but uh, like I said, it, it's not a lot of detail there. The other two contractors are telling you that they're going to go into uh, seal, they're going to saw cut. Thank you. 
So another thing is you can um, you can table them and, and get more clarification on the on the bids and compare them that way. But you know the, the, the Coria bid you have more of a detailed bid with your materials as as opposed to the Tropa bid. You know, unless you want to get you know, clarification on it, but there's not much of a description there as far as material wise and. I'll make a motion to throw off the bids and rebid it. I'll second it. Yeah,